this is how you truly get a first class experience on a railroad trip. Check out this view. Today is an extremely exciting day. Today is Saturday, May 27th, 2023, which marks the inaugural first passenger excursion from the Pittston Yard all the way to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. This ride is being brought to you by the Reading Northern Railroad, and in this video, I'm going to show you what this experience is like, including the new changes made here at the Pittston Yard. We're also going to see what our train will consist of, and of course, show you highlights of this monumental trip. So, if you're ready for an awesome day of train travel, just grab your tickets and come along with me. Now, the route this trip is taking, I'm relatively unfamiliar with, at least up until the Whitehaven area. We're going to be doing two passenger stops, and I believe we go through two tunnels as well, and it's supposed to be a very rural and scenic route. But enough of me talking, let's check out the new station area here to find out what changes were made to make this trip possible today. So this station is now officially known as the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Regional Railroad Station. And as you can tell, at least if you've seen this area before, a lot of significant changes have been made. Starting off right here, they have created a parking lot for those who are going to be passengers on the train excursions. Directly ahead of us is the gorgeous platform station, which as you'll see, goes around at a curve, matching the curve of the tracks. Now this station area here does sit within a Y, a W-Y-E, so the trains can get turned around here. This is also an active functioning rail yard. It's known as the Pittston or Coxton yard. But there is equipment here staging currently, getting ready for their runs today. And out near the front, they do have some passenger coaches, basically grabbing your attention as you drive down Main Street here. But this is a fantastic opportunity for rail fans and passengers alike. And a lot of money was put into this, including directly ahead of us here, these new and active wigwag signals. Now, if you've never seen these before, they basically hang and swing like a pendulum back and forth. So when the rails do activate them, the bells ding, the lights flash, and they wag back and forth, almost like the tail on a dog. I'd never seen them in person before, but my good friend Jamie Macon did do a video here kind of giving us a preview, and they were in activation for her when she was here. And I'll also link her video down below if you want to get a better detailed look at the station. I'm only going to be able to show you so much, basically based on all the people and activity here. I just want to give you a few highlights before we do disembark. And I do believe that they are going to have a ribbon cutting ceremony as well. And the train should be arriving here pretty soon, so we should be able to get that in action. And we'll be able to show what the train is going to consist of as far as powered equipment, coaches, and other cars. Now lining the driveway coming in are these gorgeous, ornate street lamps. Look like they're period correct. And this one sits right next to a placard here, which I'll get on the other side so you can read it, about a piece of history that took place here known as the Twin Shaft Disaster. It says on June 28, 1896, 58 men were killed in a massive cave-in of rock and coal here in the Newton Coal Company's Twin Shaft Colliery. An investigative commission appointed by the governor reported on September 25th. Although its safety recommend recommendations would often be ignored, the disaster was a factor that led to the stronger uni unionization of this region under John Mitchell after 1900. And they basically have it fenced in right here, showing where the disaster cave-in took place as a little memorial site. Now I do believe that placard was along the roadway, but they did move it in here now, so people that do come here could come check out for themselves. And it's a nice protected area right here. <laughs> Units are waiting. So here's the train schedule. I have it marked down. So boarding starts at 8:15. Departs here 8:45. It will make one stop in Mountaintop and another stop in Whitehaven to pick up more passengers. The train is scheduled to arrive in Jim Thorpe at 11 a.m. And we'll have around four hours to spend in Jim Thorpe, which is a good amount of time. Then boarding begins after 3 p.m. 
and the train departs at 3.50 p.m., drops off passengers in Whitehaven and Mountaintop and arrives back here in Pittston at 6 p.m. and it's a total of 120 miles round trip. It's gonna be a very busy day here at the station. Cars are rolling in, boarding does start at 8.15, departure is promptly 8.45. And currently as we speak, right now the time is 7.22. I got here just after seven and it's been a steady stream of cars ever since I arrived. I'm glad I got here nice and early. I imagine by eight o'clock or so, the lots are gonna be completely full. Now the work we do see done here today is basically just the first stages of what's gonna take place. We're also gonna do landscaping and other improvements to really make this a beautiful area for not only visitors passing by, but for people who do arrive here for training excursions like this each and every weekend. I do want to say in advance, I know this video is kind of slow in progression as to when the train ride is actually going to happen. That's because, as mentioned, this is the inaugural first passenger excursion. I want to document it in its entirety, show you what the feeling is like here, the vibe, and just to give you an overall experience for those who couldn't make it out on opening day since it did sell out in mere minutes. The moment we've been waiting for, the train is going to be pulling into the station, coming around the bend as we speak. And I'll let the train speak for itself. Right here is a dining car that was actually featured in a movie. This is North by Northwest, featured in the movie, the same name with Alfred Hitchcock. This is the dining car. We'll get a look inside that later on.
This is definitely a lengthy train. And these are the Crown Class cars right here. This one looks like it's fresh out of the paint booth. Pulpit Rock. And we're going to have a very brief and special ceremony here before we start boarding the people for the departure at 8.45. Chief Executive Officer of the Reading and Northern Railroad. This is his dream and he put the money behind it to make it happen. Uh, between the entire railroad we have passenger ridership of over a quarter million people last year and looking to boost that up to even higher numbers this year, especially with the Pittston uh, train starting today. Mr. Muller. Well, good morning, everybody. First of all, talking about attractions, I want to introduce my wife, Carol. <laughs> Met Carol right out of high school. I've been with her ever since. And fortunately, believe it or not, I have a wife that likes to ride trains. So that's like one in a million to start. So uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. This is so exciting. For those of you that have been around the area for a while, this place was really an eyesore. And when I bought this railroad in 1996, I really had very little idea what I was getting into, let me just tell you. So it took us 25 years to get here, but we're here now and welcome everybody and I hope you enjoy the day because it's, it's going to be fun for me with all these people and uh, just a great day. I said it reminds me of Mayberry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have one more thing to do, and that's the ribbon cutting, and then we'll start boarding people to get onto the train and get to Jim Thorpe. Okay, we'll get a couple of pictures of it before we cut it. It's such a beautiful ribbon, we don't want to cut it. Again, this is the grand opening, May 27, 2023, of the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Regional Railroad Station here at Pittston. Tina, whenever you're ready. All right. We I'm making promoted. an exception. Uh -oh. Both of these people got promoted to the back. This one I'm not sure about. <laughs> this one I just met, so we'll let it happen. Jenny's gonna be so disappointed. I know, I already texted her. <laughs> yeah, hey. I'll make it up. Okay, all right. Yep, absolutely. Up to the left, all go right. ahead. Thanks, Matt. So, yep. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm going to my grandma's today. Oh, oh my goodness, look at this. Okay, we're getting the first class treatment today. 22 is all the way at the end. All right. Is that where we're going? That's where we're going, Appalachian Trail. All right. So we actually got upgraded due to the graciousness of Mr. Andy Muller. We were riding in one of the VIP cars, a first class car. And it's my first time ever seeing these in person. Number, App number 22 Appalachian Trail is what we're going to be riding in. Both myself and Jamie Macon is going to be riding aboard. So we got special upgraded boarding passes here. Okay, you can see I'm with my friend Jason, JP Videos, and he's going to be riding with me today. This is a really rare look at some of these cars that the general public doesn't get to see. It's like a little diner in here, individual seating. Yes, thank you. You guys don't work too hard? We'll probably not do. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, look at this, we are parked out over the river. I think it's close. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, yeah. All right, now we are in the newly refurbished number three Pullman coach. So, Jamie said this is newly refurbished number three Pullman. Look at the. Styling in here. The overhead fan systems. Tin ceilings. 
rotating individual chairs. This is riding in luxury. Uh, wasn't I buying books off of you and, uh, and last car here is our car and it's basically an open air car what I was hoping for fantastic wow this is the only open air car on this train this is such a fantastic opportunity huge special thank you to Mr. Andy Mueller and everyone at Reading and Northern for allowing this to happen this is an unexpected experience and normally I would have a coach seat me and Jamie would be sitting together by a window we have the freedom to walk around here completely open air and we're gonna have plenty of freedom to walk around taking the views and see this route for the first time in a really fantastic way I, I'm, I'm almost speechless at this point it's not a luxury car but this is even better for me because I can stick you guys outside we could come inside, we could walk around. It's just unreal. So I guess it pays to make videos and to be polite and to uh, say hello to the owner. So I'm here right now with a friend everyone knows of Reading and Northern and YouTube, Jamie Macon. And I want to ask her real quick, since she is doing this with me, we planned this together months ago, what her thoughts are of not only the run we're doing today, but having the experience and opportunity to ride in this car. Well, this is an event that I've been excited about for a long time. I first heard whisperings about the new Pittston route all the way back to last summer when it was still, well, the railroad knew they were doing it. It was just a rumor to us rail fans. I wasn't working for the railroad yet. But I got to say, this is the absolute biggest event for the railroad this year. Even though we're going to run the Iron Horse Rambles, which are big, this is an entirely new route. Over half the route, nobody on this train has ridden before because there hasn't been passenger service to my known knowledge. Uh, now, now, JP and I, we've been planning this trip together for a long time, again, before I even got hired by Reading and Northern, which was in late March. Uh, so I've been looking forward to this just as a passenger, and then this is a total surprise, getting this upgrade to be with the press in car number 22, the Appalachian Trail. You guys know I love the open air cars more than anything, and this is my favorite of the open air cars because it's so unique. It's more open in the back. It has three kind of seatings. It has this open balcony and every time i've ridden it before the caboose was behind this is my first time riding it where it is just open so i am really psyched and i'm so glad to have my J friend jp along for the ride with me absolutely and i just want to thank jamie for doing this with me as well because again we planned this months ago and we both kept their word we bought tickets opening morning and they sold out really fast so we were both lucky individuals even though for her later on she got hired she probably could have ridden it either way <laughs> probably but yeah as she mentioned this is just going to be a really surreal experience first time ever riding this run for me going through parts of pennsylvania i haven't seen by rail before and i've been on this car once before on the lehigh gorge scenic railway where they do use it there sometimes but using it on this route is probably the best car out of the whole entire fleet because we're going to have the opportunity to roam around see all the different sites and of course later on we will take a walk through to show you the north by northwest dining car yes which was featured in the alfred hitchcock movie right that's correct all right so a lot of action to come and hope you guys enjoy the ride here we have a peek around the sweeping curve here the station platform is up there several cars but the lead units are well up there we're the very last car on the train and currently resting on a bridge over the river so just to give a quick update on the configuration of this train. So initially it was supposed to be the F units leading for pulling power and there's gonna be an SD50 on the rear for supplemental pushing power of some of the steeper grades. The way it is now as we saw it approaching is that all three locomotives are lashed up together in the front which works out in our favor because since we're on the rear of the train we have nothing behind us except open view. So I'm so happy it worked out the way it did not only with the lash up of the motive power but the car that we got to sit in for this opportunity is going to allow us basically 360 degree views. It couldn't be any more incredible than what it is. Basically above and beyond my expectations. And again, a special thanks to Andy Muller, the owner CEO of Reading Northern for not only putting this run together, which has been rumored for years and it finally happened, but just for being so gracious to those of us who do promote and patronize his business as a rail fan and just as a lover of trains. 
Look at this gorgeous signal in the back. My favorite color too. And most likely, our friend Andy's gonna be back here at some point. Usually these chairs are reserved for him and a friend or a guest or his wife. So we may be riding with them as well, but if there is any open spaces, this is gonna be our view for certain portions of this trip. All right, air's been released. Gave a two to the horn. I hear the revving up of the diesel units. We should be departing in mere seconds here. Now the question is, what side do we stand on? Which window do we use? <laughs> it's whatever one we want. All right, we're moving. Inaugural first run, Pits and the Jim Thorpe is underway. Pretty full lot. Some rail fans already. I'm gonna be smiling ear to ear the entire ride. Look at that old line right there. And we're moving really fast right now. Heck, if we want, we could sit right here. What do you guys think so far? If you're enjoying it, give one of these. fans, I love seeing them. <laughs> oh, that's a uh, Hitston. Norfolk something goes over the other line. And up here would, would have been on um, the lower line, probably they did the line the video on the abandoned oh, section. Okay. Right this area. Right up here. Yeah. Okay. That's Norfolk Southern. Okay. I'm seeing parts of my neck of the woods that I've never seen by rail. I hear the horn, must be a crossing coming up. These people's backyards have fantastic views on a regular basis. Every weekend this is running. Going through DuPont right now. DuPont, Pennsylvania. Telegraph pole, insulators. Fantastic shot.
this in the fall, that's going to be quite the run. I wouldn't be surprised if they had some dome cars for this in the fall. Yeah. I wish I was recording. We just passed an abandoned reservoir that I filmed with both Alan from Revenge of the Apocalypse and Matt G. Where I actually went on the head wall of the reservoir and got stuck because it was icy. Um, I'll link that video down below if you want to watch that. But yeah, we just passed it just now. I was not recording at that moment. But we are near the uh, Wilkesbury area heading towards Mountaintop right now. here in person hopefully this gives you a good idea of what it's like to be here with me right now I can't explain what an opportunity this is just enjoy the rest of the video that's all I can say There's the man. Good seat back here, huh? If you look down, you can see Route 309. Okay. We've got a spectacular view coming up here. There's Route 309. There's the valley. means we're approaching mountaintop in just a couple minutes. Officially in Mountaintop, Pennsylvania. We're making our first stop to pick up some more passengers. Yeah, it should be a little station or platform up ahead. I do see some powered equipment as well. Okay, what's the name of this? This is uh, the Penobscot Yard in Mountaintop. Okay. And it's going to be our first stop to pick up passengers. All right, so right now we have Mr. Andy Mueller, the owner and CEO of Reading Northern, and we're on our inaugural Piston and Jim Thorpe run. Don't you want to get Jamie on here too? Jamie's recording as well. <laughs> okay. It's a team effort here. Well, I want to ask, what are your first impressions so far as to how things are going and the attendance and everything? You know, 
Absolutely, absolutely thrilled. I mean, the people are having a great time. I mean, the, the whole setup, it's just almost like a dream come true, you know, to see what's happened here. And you have to go back and the people that remember what that yard used to look like, you know, it was a disaster. Mm -hmm. And it took a long time to clean it up. Because you know we're in the freight business, right? This passenger is not paying the bills. And so we could only do that when we had the time to do it. And I wanted to do that for at least 10 years. And it all came together and the guys worked at it. It's just beautiful. I mean, I, I can't say enough. It's almost unrecognizable now, the, the transformation of that yard. And yeah. for the city of Piston, it's a, a welcome attraction. And I know this has been rumored for years that this run was going to happen. Right. And it, for it to come to fruition is a fantastic right. thing for both rail fans and everyone around the neighborhood and the, well, and you know, the community. You screwed, you screwed up. You should have bought all those houses along there. They're worth uh, more now since I fixed the railroad yard. That's true. Right? Yeah. 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 Fantastic opportunity there. Yeah. Well, with that being said, I just wanted to thank you once again for making this happen for myself and everyone else that's going to ride this year and that you have done a fantastic job for the railroad community and I can't thank you enough for everything that you do, even for future generations to come. You're quite welcome. And I watch all your videos. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> This is the best car in the whole train. Yeah, it's Absolutely. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Fun? Nah. <laughs> Me either. This look fun, guys. Of course I am. What a way to spend the day, huh? Messy house. We're going through first of two tunnels in just a few seconds here. White Haven Tunnel? White Haven Tunnel. Wow. What a shot. And it's cold in here. That is a long tunnel, wow. Look at that, what a shot.
Follow by a rock cut. They got a good shot there. I handed a souvenir of the inaugural excursion train ride and there's some goodies inside. We'll check it out later. I'll show you what's inside. So they actually handed us a flag. They said when we get to town, wave the flag. So that's what we're going to do. We're both doing the same shot. <laughs> Passing right through Whitehaven, along the DNL Trail, along the Lehigh River, which means we're entering the Lehigh Gorge State Park. And we're going to be coming up on our second tunnel in just a little bit. From there, we'll be going through familiar territory by Penhaven Junction, arriving into Jim Thorpe. So we have seen that before on the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway. video including the curved tunnel we're going through a little bit. Once we go through the curved tunnel we'll then go through Penhaven Junction where we'll cross over the Lehigh River and be riding alongside the Heritage Trail, the rail trail, uh, all the way to Jim Thorpe including going across Nesquehoning Bridge. Got a view of the Lehigh River, the rail trail directly on the other side over there. right there. Just some maintenance away. We're told that sometimes they park the executive cars there. Hickory Run.
right, just a couple of moments, we're going to be approaching and passing through the Rockport Tunnel. And the unique thing about it is that it's a curved tunnel. All right, here it is. views that you can't see other than by rail or by raft. Pretty desolate but gorgeous area. Here we are at Pentenhaven Junction. my bike now we're alongside the trail the trail is gonna cross over and the trail is gonna be on that side in just a moment right there so when you ride the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway the train stops right about here there's gonna be a little platform off to the right and that's where it stops and then reverses back to Jim Thorpe so we've seen this route numerous times on my channel on the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway videos. Okay, we're at the Rock Cut. We're at the gorge area here where the Turnhole Tunnel is. Which means we're just about two miles away from Jim Thorpe. There's the tunnel right there. are approaching Nesquahoning Bridge. The Freightline Bridge will be off to the right hand side. There probably will be some rail fans up on the embankment like there always is catching the inaugural run from Pittston. Going through the truss bridge here. And surprisingly, there's only like one person up there. Usually it's loaded. Oh, well, maybe two people. I was up there before to catch the double header 425 and 2102 last year. I was also down near the river as well. And here we are close to the, the edge. Bridge right here. There's the old signal station. Last used in the 1970s. Oh, he's cruising.
Let's see if we get some horn action. Let's get one of these. So cool. That was so awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, it's 11 a.m. Lehigh Gorge train passing. And they were witnessing the arrival of the first train from Pittston. A lot of new rail work done here recently. All oh, the RDCs are already here. We made it safely. We did. Yeah. Congratulations on a uh, well done first trip. Thank That's you. a success. Went perfectly. And uh, we didn't have to get too many off the train. We're officially here. First time ever arriving at Jim Thorpe via train from Pittston, Pennsylvania. These are the famous RDCs known as rail diesel cars that myself and Jamie have ridden in in the past from Pottsville to Jim Thorpe. And that car is the one we rode in, Jamie, 9168. So that video, if you haven't seen that one, is a whole different experience. I'll link it down below in the description. And again, hats off to Andy and the entire crew of Reading and Northern. Bottle breaking ceremony right here. Finally had a chance to go through the envelope here and show you what came inside. So on the front of it, it does have the F unit there that's pulling our trains today. Date documenting the inaugural run. It did come with a Reading and Northern Railroad magnet with the new Wilkesbury Scranton Regional Railroad Pittston station. 
And this flyer here has grand opening excursion. Nice picture. And inside has some information regarding the F units and the route between Jim Thorpe and Pittston, which I will read over. And just some more general information. And over here is a Reading and Northern Railroad system map, which shows you the entire route that they run here. And it's classified as mainline, branch lines, mainline double track, connecting railroads. And it gives you a good scale as to how big their operating area is. Now here's something that you may not have known, and I didn't know it until today, and that was when I spoke with Andy on board the train. And he let me know that his railroad company, Reading and Northern, is basically one of a kind. Well, what do I mean by that? What I mean is that Reading and Northern is a freight railroad. They are in the business of transporting freight, but they just so happen to do passenger excursions as well, such as the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway, the Pittston Run Today, the RDCs. They are basically the only railroad company around as a freight railroad company that offers passenger excursions. You can't get passenger rides at other railroads, but they basically just do passenger railroad. So Reading and Northern as a freight railroad business is basically unique, one of a kind, that they offer passenger excursions as a freight railroad company. And to me, that's pretty awesome because they don't have to do that. He stated that these passenger runs don't really earn them any money. It's more or less offering people the experience to enjoy it. So hats off to Reading and Northern for allowing people like myself and others to ride on their amazing collection of equipment on beautiful sections of the track here in Pennsylvania. Turning around at the Y after we departed, our train is finally arriving back for us to board. Appalachian Trail, that's where we rode in on. We'll be boarding that again. That'll be our coach of choice, train car of choice. And you'll be able to see the rest of the cars here consisting of the entire train, just showing how long and lengthy it really is.
the arrival back at the station. That means time to board. As we make our way through, we'll give you one more look at these impressive cars, which are air conditioned, nice and cool in here. <laughs> One day I'll be riding one of those cars as well. Hopefully. Aside from the one I'm riding in, which is the open air, which I love, I think this is my second favorite car based on the, just based on how it looks. Enough said. But feel free to comment down below tell me what your favorite car is that you've seen in this video. But we'll talk about luxury and royalty. This reminds me of the train car from the movie Wild Wild West with Will Smith. Fantastic. And here we are back at the very last car, Appalachian Trail. Dining car, North by Northwest, featured in the Alfred Hitchcock movie. So this is number 1166, the North by Northwest dining car. Thank you. It's air conditioned. It feels really good. I was in it one time before, but that was during the winter. So they have seating in here. We'll grab a snack. It's nice and air conditioned. Taking the whirlwind tour here. All right. You got the. You set up shop. Don't miss the Maggie back here. So this is where all this is where all the magic happens. Yes. <laughs> well, a little magic anyway. Yeah. Gotcha. Very neat. So is is this like at one time was it like a regular kitchen in here? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. This, was is, a, this is famous too. Do you know yeah, it was in the movie Alfred Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jamie told me that. Mm -hmm. Somebody so. somebody told me that earlier today. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Neat to have some history tied to it. Yes. Oh, it's very neat. You guys are in a nice, cool air-conditioned car too. So oh, you're all, nice and cool. yeah, yeah. Some of them are pretty, pretty warm back there. That's why I said a lot of drinks are salad. Yeah, warm. I believe it. Yeah. So inside the dining car here, they do have this big board with everyone signing it, and we're going to do the same since we are part of the inaugural run, and we're going to put it right up here. We'll do the channel name. There we go. Where it's official now. I have to say, it was quite the walk to reach this car. We're at the very end. This is near the front. We're gonna go through a lot of cars to get here. But very neat to see. Famous dining car.
listen to Jim Thorpe back, but all good things must come to And just like that, we're back here in Pittston, Pennsylvania, home of the Wilkesbury Scranton Regional Railroad Station. And coming back with a goodie bag, literally a Reading and Northern cooler bag, compliments of Reading and Northern, same color scheme as their locomotives, most of them anyways. So first off, I do want to say a big special thanks to all of the Reading and Northern staff and crew, especially the ones who were responsible for today's run and working today's run. And an extra huge special big thanks to Mr. Andy Moeller, the owner and CEO of Reading and Northern, because he basically gave me and Jamie press passes to get upgraded for free. We didn't even ask for it. He's like, well, why don't you guys ride in this car? And it just so happened to be, what in my opinion, the best car on the entire train. That open air car on the end was probably the best experience you could ask for because you got basically 360 views. I was able to film as much as I wanted when I wanted, it wasn't too crowded, and it just offered a once in a lifetime experience, especially for this inaugural run. And I don't know if that car is gonna be offered on regular runs going forth, but it was today, and I was one of the fortunate few to enjoy it. Now on the ride back, I didn't film much, just a couple quick clips, and the car itself, the um, Appalachian Trail car, was pretty crowded. Most people who were riding other cars, the VIP cars, came back there because they realized how fantastic it is, so I let them get the better seats. I just got a seat for myself and enjoy the ride back, just filming a couple quick clips here and there. But with that being said, this was such an amazing event and by far the best train ride I've ever ridden. I mean, it so far exceeds expectations I had and this is a fantastic way to come to Jim Thorpe without having to drive there. And you get to basically spend $39, you get a round trip train ticket and you have a fantastic experience being taken care of by Reading and Northern Railroad. You don't have to pay for parking. You have four hours in Jim Thorpe and you have an incredible train ride back, whether you leave from here in Pittston or at Penobscot in Mountaintop. So if you're in the area and you're able to do this, I highly recommend it. Even if you're not a fan of trains, I'm guaranteed you're gonna enjoy it. And if you do wanna visit Jim Thorpe, don't wanna worry about traffic and stuff like that, paying for parking, this is probably one of the best ways to do it. It's going to be operating every single weekend through the remainder of the year up until Christmas, and it's going to be running on select holidays as well. So check the website, which will be linked down below to get more information and to buy your tickets online. But $39 is probably the best deal around for a, tra for a train excursion. Big thanks to Jamie for doing this with me as well. We did plan this months in advance, and this is something I've been looking forward to doing for years, ever since this was rumored to happen. 
and Mr. Mueller kept his word, made it come to fruition, and here we are on the inaugural day. And one thing I'm going to be doing in the near future is rail fanning this route. Probably starting off somewhere near the cemetery where we began, which is in that direction, and following it down to Jim Thorpe, and maybe even on the way back, and you'll be able to see what this looks like from an outside perspective. But this is a huge train today. I think it was around 21 cars. The future trains will be smaller, but regardless, it is still a great run to ride on or to even rail fan. And as rumored, 2102 will be pulling this in the future this year. So you have to stay tuned to their website and their Facebook for announcements when that's going to happen. Anyways, guys, thank you so very much for spending your day with me. I know this was a long video, but I wanted to incorporate as much as I could for those who can't come and do this or weren't able to make it today or couldn't buy tickets because they were sold out. This basically showed you what this whole experience was like from arriving here at the new station area to the opening ceremony to the bottle breaking, which glass went right by my head, but I got a good shot. And just the sights and sounds along the way. I'm going home a happy, happy guy, and my cheeks are hurting from smiling so much. So take care, everyone. Thanks for riding. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.